what Matthew 28, 1 to 10 also tells us is, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me, in verse 10. There's the expectation that the disciples will see Jesus again. And of course, they did in person. But that's also our hope because of Easter as well, that we will see Jesus one day, someday. In previous years, Easter has always seemed like a done deal to me. Jesus rose, we gather to celebrate, it's all good, all is well with the world. But not this year. Like those first disciples, we know Jesus is risen. We've experienced his genuine presence in our lives, his joy, his healing, his love, his forgiveness, his wisdom, his comfort, and so much more. But this year, more than ever, we're also aware that we live in this awkward in-between times where Jesus has risen, he is here with us, but there is still much evil in the world. Easter is very real, but we're waiting to see Jesus once again to bring complete justice, order, and healing to our world. Think for a moment about that day, one day, someday, when we will gather here together again. <laughs> when we as a church gather as for a grand family reunion again here in the church, and we gather as our individual families, and it'll be just so wonderful. I can hardly wait for that time when all the restrictions are gone and we can gather together without fear. When as a community we can go to concerts again and hockey games again and weddings again, when we can hug again and shake hands again and play sports again, imagine what that'll be like. It'll be absolutely glorious. In the meantime, life is pretty drab, pretty lonely, pretty frustrating, pretty empty. We're eagerly anticipating something so much more, but right now we're stuck here for now. But imagine if this social distancing and social isolation were all you knew, if this was the only experience of life you ever had. Imagine if this was just normal, how you expected every day would be. This is the good life, at least as good as you ever knew it. You never knew there was such a thing as a real hug from a grandparent or a real birthday party or a real church service. Imagine someone trying to explain to you that one day you could actually be part of a crowd of six or 7,000 people at the NMAC Center, or you could actually go into a church and worship together with a couple hundred people. You could actually go to school and be with other kids. You wouldn't believe it. It would seem absolutely incredible. What if life, even in the best of times, four weeks ago, six weeks ago, is in comparison with being with Jesus fully one day, someday? What if life, in the best of times that we've known it, is really just as drab and dull as this time of isolation is compared with normal life? What if life, even when we thought we had it so good, is just a shadow of life, what life will be that on that day of days when we are with Jesus for all eternity? What if life, life with the risen Jesus one day, someday, is going to be even more wonderful than the end of social distancing and COVID-19? What if there is something more to look forward to that we can't even begin to imagine because it seems so incredible? But that's the reality that Easter is inviting us to consider. In normal times, we may not really think about the future because for most of us, normal life is pretty good and it's looking all the better as this, these days drag on and on and on and on. We may have talked vaguely about being with Jesus, but we're having such a good time here and now in normal times that we're really not sure a future with Jesus could be a whole lot better. But what if life with Jesus, when we see him face to face, really be, will be even more wonderful than the end of this social isolation? Maybe when we actually see Jesus, we will be transformed as his disciples were transformed to find an incredible joy and hope in him. C.S. Lewis describes life as we know it now 
as only the land of shadows. He says we're living now in the shadow lands. Real life, he says, hasn't begun yet. Ultimately, we are all waiting for the fulfillment of being with Jesus fully on that day of days. Believe it or not, Easter is a foretaste of something even more wonderful to come. Easter is a promise of the future that we cannot even begin to imagine, but we look forward to with hope. Easter 2020. Paul asks us this question. Can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Maybe we're asking ourselves that question right now. Does it mean that God no longer loves us if we're in these difficult times? And how does Paul answer? Paul, writing in difficult times himself, ultimately facing imprisonment and death, Paul says, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all of creation, is ever able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the good news of Easter. Jesus is always with us. He has risen. He has destroyed the power of sin and death, and nothing can ever separate us from him. One day, someday, this crisis will end, and we will be back together again. Even more than that, one day, someday, we will be with him face to face and with all our loved ones for all eternity. Yes, it will be great to be together again with friends and family. I'm looking forward to that day so much. Look forward to it with eager anticipation. But there is something even greater awaiting us, the grandest reunion of all time when we are together with Jesus on that glorious day of days. We can face today, we can face every day without fear. We don't need to be afraid because he is with us. Nothing can separate us from his love. He will be with us every moment, every day, forever and ever. That's our good news. That's the good news of Easter. Do not be afraid. Come and see. He is with us, and nothing can separate us from his love. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. God, you loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten Son. And thank you that death could not hold him, but that he rose triumphant on Easter Sunday morning. Help us to know the power of his resurrection, the power of his love. Help us not to be afraid but to face every day with confidence and with hope, knowing that he is always with us and nothing can ever separate us from his love. Amen.